Cool. Mate, what's going what's on, what's... man? Man, life is good. The sun is shining, as you can see, just coming up from the side there. No, it looks good over there. You got um you got a nice aesthetic. You got the little plant in the background, sun's coming through. Um I've got like a drill going on in, the, in my background. So hopefully yourself and uh whoever's watching uh isn't able to pick up that. It's pretty intense, actually. <laughs> Be fair. Uh but yeah, let's um let's crack on with the Q and A. Uh, I'm sure, uh, guys, if you're if you're watching this and you, and you don't know who we are, um, just feel free to like check out the the Instagram um, social media channels that are linked in the, the description below. Um, I'm sure it'd be fun to sit here and, and listen to us waffle about ourselves, but you might just be more interested in the questions that we're going to answer. Uh, so we'll focus on that. Uh, Who's kicking off first? I'll kick off first. Go for it. I'll kick off first. So, man, um, I've got a, I've got an online client, right? So, someone who I do their programming, and um, I don't get to be there in person with them at the gym. And so, the only way I can kind of assess their form and their exercises or whether they they understand what exercise that I mean is if they send like send me videos and then I can kind of see what's happening and often what I'm observing is like maybe a few months pass by and the exercise that I've programmed for them they've not really been doing it in the most effective way right uh so there's little nuances that I can pick up on when I'm working with somebody in person and I kind of have to accept the fact that there's some stuff that I'm going to be missing when I'm working with somebody online. Uh, so one of those things is when people deadlift, um, there's a nuance to how much they use their legs and their hips versus how much they use their arms and their lower back so with this particular client um he's gone to do a deadlift session right he's been getting stronger at deadlifts everything's going super well on that end um but every now and again he likes to ask this question and i know what this question is because i've had it a few times and i know why people ask it but they don't say it out and out and they say should i be deadlifting with a belt right so uh, i'm gonna leave that there and i'm gonna leave that question with you what what are we saying about that mate damn okay well i can i can say one thing first i have never used the belt personally so for for one thing as far as like is it something that you need my first answer would be no Unless you are someone who is maybe for one thing incredibly strong, you'd have to be really, really strong for one thing, uh, and you're trying to lift even more weight, and that's what the help that's what the belt will help you do. But otherwise, do you need the belt? I would first say no for most people, because people tend to be over reliant on the belt. They think that the belt is going to protect them from some kind of injury in their lower back, and so instead of actually bracing their core making sure their spine is neutral, they think, oh, the belt is going to do the work for me. I can just lift and end up using their arms and their back probably more than they should. So I would say instead, focus on learning how to brace properly, focus on getting into the right start position, uh, focus on driving through your legs. If you do those things, your body actually has what I call a natural belt, right? Um, and then should you decide actually... I want to lift as much weight as I can. I just want to look good. And fine, you can use the belt if you want. But personally, I don't think you, I don't think anybody, I, I don't think most people need it unless you're looking to compete in some way. The, yeah, the belt thing is very, there's a few different reasons I've noticed people ask that question. One, they've done deadlifts and now they're feeling, uh, a little bit of discomfort, maybe soreness in their lower back. 
and there's a what well, I, I don't say anything at that point because the next day or the day after they're going to be feeling fine so what happens is when we get sore in our chest or when we get sore in our quads we just immediately assume i've trained that area that makes sense in a few days i'm going to recover the soreness is going to go away when we're training um deadlifts our lower back is involved so muscles around that um lumbar area they're going to work and therefore you're going to be fatiguing them they're going to cause some stress there so there is going to be some soreness and some discomfort uh but the lower back region is so like everyone's tried to make it this thing of like it, the narrative around it is all based around injury and, and not that it's just another part of your body that can be um, stronger if it's not strong enough for the task. So that's the first thing is just because you're feeling your lower back, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're injured. Now I didn't necessarily explain all that to him. Um, I just, I just waited, right. For the next couple of days for him to then be like, yeah, yeah, it's feeling all right now. Uh, and I usually just say like, why are you asking about belt? Right. Um, so what's, what's brought on that curiosity. Uh, and then they're going to kind of tell me, um, whatever they're going to tell me. So they might tell me something they've read online. Uh, they might be like, oh, isn't it supposed to help with this? If they then are asking me more questions, I already know. You didn't know why you wanted this thing. Um, you're just probably feeling your lower back right now. Uh, and the most obvious thing, which is true for all of exercises, is the load management. So picking the right weights and the right repetitions for what you are able to do is important. Uh, and that's a, it's easier said than done because you might not necessarily without any sort of testing, uh, you might not necessarily know. So, you know, going to what you said, obviously the foundation is learning how to do it and, and, and practicing it very well. Your next step is then testing how much weight you can work with effectively, where it's just like, this isn't so much weight that I'm losing my deadlifting structure and I'm still able to concentrate on using my legs. And once you've done that, you're like, great, well, I'm going to work within this repetition scheme and I'm going to try and get stronger in this repetition scheme. So it might be five reps, it might be A reps, it might be three reps. Obviously, the lower the number of repetitions, the more you can lift. Um, I'm not going to get into deadlift programming here, but yeah, uh, unless you're lifting very, very much like huge weights, we're talking well over double your body weight. You're probably fine not using a belt. Uh, if you do want to use a belt because it's there to help you create pressure in your abdomen. Um, so it's like one less thing I guess you have to think about. Um, then fair enough. I find them a bit of a faff. It's like an extra thing I now need to carry around and have and you know, uh, whilst I'm not weak, I'm not like super strong either. So me deadlifting double my body weight for a number of reps, um, my, my core and lumbo pelvic area of my body is more than strong enough to handle that amount of stress. And I've built up to that gradually over time. So not only have my legs gotten stronger, but so is my, my core and pelvic muscles as well. Uh, to be able to do that so rather than if you're needing a belt potentially i'd argue maybe you're rushing it especially if you're not lifting like you know 200 kilos plus or whatever um which majority of people aren't really are they yeah you know the funny thing is i find a lot of people who do use a belt just actually don't know how to use it they don't know how to brace against the belt so they have a belt, they're wearing the belt, but they're not using it effectively. So I'm like, okay. I mean, you're wearing the belt, but if you learn how to brace properly, you probably wouldn't need it at this point because you're not lifting at least double your body weight anyways. So for anyone listening, learn how to do the movement effectively first. And then should you get really strong, maybe then 
consider using the belt. It's a, yeah, it's a good accessory if you're if you're at a level which is, you know, well over your actual body weight. Like there is a limit to how much we're gonna be able to physically take, no matter how strong our muscles get. Um, our physical like if I tried to deadlift three hundred kilos, um, well, I can't do that one, but two, uh, yeah, like I, it might be a smart idea for me to use a belt at that stage, but um, the reality of me, or let's even just say two hundred and twenty kilos, right? I think what's I'm seventy kilos, three times body weight is what one forty, uh, two hundred and ten kilos. So for me to then deadlift three times my body weight, maybe at that point. Um, but honestly, I, I'm not I'm nowhere near close to doing that. I don't think I'm I'm likely to achieve a deadlift that that's that 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 is that heavy. So I personally am probably not going to be worrying about wearing a belt. Um yeah, it it is it's a bit overkill and it does seem like most people aren't using it for bracing purposes. They're more using it because they're concerned about their lower back. And yeah, if you are concerned about your lower back, then, you know, uh, see if you're able to improve the way that you're doing the exercise and also double check, like, are you using the right weight or doing the right amount of repetitions for you at this stage? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a common question. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you want me to throw the next one in? Yeah, I'm ready. If you if you've got some, go for it. But I've got a, I've got one for you as well. No, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. Bring it. All right. So where I work, we we coach classes, right? And in those classes, it's a roughly 50-50 split: cardio and weights. A little bit of rowing in between. And every now and then, I get someone asking, usually guys. They'll say, okay, mate, my goal is to build as much muscle as possible. But I also want to do the cardio, which is high intensity, usually about 30 minutes worth. And then they spend about 30 minutes doing the lifting. Bear in mind, we have also other classes that are more lifting focused with no cardio. So, mate, I enjoy the cardio, but I also want to build as much muscle as I, as I can. What should I do? That's the question. I... I enjoy the cardio, but my main goal is building muscle. Mm. Okay, so this for a long time has been very misunderstood, I would say, in terms of there was this idea that wasn't entirely verified and maybe in the last 10 15 years i don't exactly know but we've been able to see that it's not true and the idea is this is that doing cardio burns muscle it does not um what we do end up seeing is that people that add and focus on cardio tend not to be able to do as much muscle building work and so for so therefore, they're less likely to see as much muscular development as another individual who's just mainly focusing on muscle building work and not doing as much cardio. And so that's where there's been this misinterpretation of cardio's impact on muscle building. So you don't have to worry about cardio burning muscle. That's one thing. So if you want to add cardio in, you can. All you have to do is take into consideration that your muscle building work, i.e. the, the um, resistance training, the weightlifting that you're going to do uh, to apply volume to your muscles to build them, have you got enough energy and are they sufficiently recovered um, from doing the cardio work for you to do that to the amount that you see you know, significant returns on? Um, and then to that note, probably the next most common question would be like, should I do cardio before and after my weight training session? Um, and arguably if your goal is muscle building, then you prioritize the muscle building work first, and then you'll do your cardio after that. Ideally though, separately, because it's a group class format, 
and you're doing a mixture of both. I mean, track your outcomes, track your results, uh, which is tricky with muscle building because um, if you're if you're natural, tracking your muscle building progress, uh, it might take you at least a year to notice if anything change. And I'm not even talking about scale weight. Uh, your best bet is actual like tape measurements and and certain body parts, and then even then you've got to take into account uh, body fat level. So you might have gained or lost body fat, and then that changed the tape measurement um, measurement that you're getting. Uh, so it's it's really tricky to to measure muscle building um, unless you're really like measuring it over a much larger span of time, like uh, two years, three years, five years. And yeah, you'll see some weight gain occur, but it's not as significant as the actual visual impact and maybe the tape measure. Uh, so, and it's very subjective as to what you think is good progress and not good progress. Uh, going back to the question though, cardio is a great idea. Um, I think you just need to be measured with how much you do of each and then pay attention to, are you feeling recovered enough? Uh, and it's not interfering with your output on the, the weight training, the muscle building work. Um, I do cardio. I do one uh, run once a week because I want to maintain my ability to do running. And I also know the benefits of uh, doing cardiovascular training on my cardiovascular health. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not the best thing that I do very well. I'm quite a slow runner. I can, I don't have the best times. I don't have the best distances, but it's a box that I'm ticking. And I know my priorities are more in my, you know, how strong I am on certain lifts. And then second to that, my muscularity, uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to also, you know, I want to be healthy as well. I want to be fit. So I'm going to do some running, but I've got to manage my expectations and be like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to do a sub 20 minute 5k and I'm probably not going to be able to just casually run 15 kilometers, uh, but I can just do my best within whatever level of effort that I'm giving to it. And my final note on that is just be very clear with what your priorities are and then manage your expectations with everything else. It's funny you mentioned priorities because I was thinking about that as you were speaking, right? And I think there's another layer to that question. So a lot of the time, what people aren't saying is I want to continue doing the cardio because I don't want to gain fat. If anything, I want to lose fat, but I also want to gain muscle at the same time. They might not be saying it, but that's what they're thinking. And I always find it a challenge tackling these questions because you mentioned priorities. And for me, I'm thinking, okay, what's the priority? What's the goal? And I always push back saying, hey, which one is the most important to you? Is it losing fat or is it building muscle? I'm always trying to trying to get that answer because most people want to do both. And that's like the holy grail of fitness. If everybody could do that, I mean, wouldn't it be nice? And I find that people, people struggle with the notion that well, when I tell them, hey, you can only do both for so long. If you're new to fitness, if you're starting your fitness journey, that's perfectly fine. You can just go and work out, eat healthy, and you'll do both. You'll lose fat and you'll build muscle at the same time. That's all good. But after you've been doing this for about a year, maybe less sometimes, maybe more, depends on the person, then all of a sudden your, your results start to stall a little bit. And I find that it's just better to choose one. Choose one, focus on it for a few months, see what kind of results you can get. And, and then assess from there, do I want to focus on losing um, losing body fat or do I want to focus on building muscle more? And the reason I, I ask that question is because your, trend, your diet is going to dictate which way you go. So if you're kind of at maintenance, again, at the beginning, if it's, if you're, if it's your first few months in your, in your fitness journey, you might be able to do both. But after a while, your results are going to be mediocre if, you don't, if you're not specific on which one you're trying to do. So tell me what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to do the whole unpacking deeper layer stuff 
uh, this time around. I usually do because whenever we're having these conversations with anyone, you know, there's more questions to ask. Like, why do you even want to look this way? Why does it matter to you? Is there a point where it's going to be enough? Um, what do you think is going to happen when you do uh, look like a lean, muscular person? How does your life change? And I don't think most people think that far ahead. Honestly, I don't. If they did and if they were to experience it, what I've seen is when we have had people get lean and muscular, they didn't change that much. The way they felt and the way they felt about themselves didn't change that much. I've certainly been through that experience myself. And actually, it's helped me to get to a point where I'm very comfortable with not being lean and muscular and simply just enjoying my training. My personal opinion is more people should strive to enjoy their training and focus less on the physiological outcomes you're guaranteed to get physiological outcomes from training. Enjoying your training is completely up to you. And if you can enjoy your training, then you can be consistently uh, doing it and you can be a consistently healthy person with consistently healthy outcomes. And I'd much rather be enjoying something than suffering because of it. That's probably not what people want to hear when they ask that question, though. <laughs> For sure. Um, but it's a good question. I like it. And I think I'd, I'd love to, to talk about that again uh, on another episode. So we'll probably we'll probably expand on that, uh, you know, the next time we're on. Anything to add? No, no, unless unless you do, unless you want to go through one more, but uh, no, guess. that's uh, I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make it a bit shorter and sweeter on these ones. Um, these episodes are still a bit of a work in progress, so uh, I'm just gonna try and see how we get on. If we're uh, like nice, punchy, sweet, short and sweet, um, trying to deliver value um, within however much people want to receive it. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone's um, I hope everyone's kind of like learn, like generally speaking, just learning and understanding and, and reshifting their perspectives around how they manage their own training and their well-being. Um, because there, there's room for improvement, and so I, you know, that's one of the reasons I want to keep having these conversations is so that we can keep contributing to how we improve all of that overall. And uh, yeah. If uh, if we do a good enough job, um, maybe we don't have a job. I don't know. That's another that's another topic and another subject for another day. Uh, but yeah, Mate, thank you, um, thank you for coming on again. Uh, we'll be we'll be back in about a month, I think. So that's what, or maybe sooner, um, depending on how things play out. I'm sure, there's going to be more questions. Uh, there's always someone who's got something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they always was like really <laughs> uh but yeah uh always good to have you on uh, and again like i said at the beginning of the episode uh if you guys want to find us or find out more about us um the links to our social media channels are in the description below and of course as always please like and subscribe i don't know if that makes any difference by saying it um but it does make a difference by you doing it so much appreciated. Thanks for having me, Moose. Peace. Peace.